The great height of some islands in relation to their surface determines the weather conditions depending on their altitude. A humid subtropical climate, almost permanent in the lower layers, and another one with much more extreme and dry air, almost continental alpine climate in the upper layers. With its high altitude, Tenerife hosts three different climate layers. Sea humidity blocked in the lower layer, a stable band at medium height, and the typically extreme and unstable mountain conditions in the summit. Another key point to understand flying conditions in the Canary Islands is thermal inversion. It occurs when the anticyclone grows or approaches the island, since the air inside the anticyclones descends or subsides, generating higher temperature caused by increased pressure, thus forming a stable layer where temperature increases with height instead of decreasing, as would be expected. This layer, which ranges between 700 and 1,400 meters, delimits two different air currents. Below it, the cool, humid, lower trade wind controlled by the isobars, and above it, the warm, dry, upper trade wind, which flows along the general west air current. We are in the Reino of the Alicios, in the Anticyclone of the Azores. Las Islas Canarias están influenciadas el 90% del tiempo por este anticiclón. Tenerife es una isla aerodinámica. Su forma, similar a un perfil, y su orientación en flecha hacia los vientos dominantes del nordeste, desvía el viento creando zonas de remanso y calma que permiten la actividad de parapente durante todo el año. Tenerife es uno de los mejores lugares para practicar practice free flight. Practice. Without fear of being wrong, it can be assured that it is one of the places with most flyable days per year on the planet. It is rare to have several consecutive days in which flying is not possible. Actually, during winter time, there is not such a place in the Northern Hemisphere as far as flyable days for paragliding are concerned. One factor that explains these unusually excellent conditions is the thermal inversion already mentioned. The common feature of the Canary Islands climate is present more than 90% of the time. Inversion, usually of about 3 or 4 degrees Celsius, blocks the connectivity of the lower and upper air masses almost physically, preventing the wind from descending from the summits of the island and sinking again, forcing it to surround the island as it would do with a wing profile. If inversion fades away, that means so does the anticyclone and stormy weather is coming. Therefore, cloudiness increases significantly and rain shows up. The peculiar arrow shape of the island, which is orientated in the opposite direction to the usual northeast winds, produces veering airflow towards the sides of lower layers. This behavior generates diverse, suitable local aerodynamic effects for free flight. The winds of the upper and middle layers are also blocked thanks to the high triangular central mountain range, 2,200 meters of mean altitude, and considerable length over 40 kilometers in relation to the total length of the island, which is 87 kilometers. Because of its triangular shape, the perimeter of the island with three far ends restricts the Coanda wind effect on the profile since it is not allowed to turn when reaching them and it is therefore forced to flow offshore whilst generating calm areas. This explains that under most weather conditions we can always find a place sheltered on the leeward side of the impressive volcanic mountain. A microclimate or bubble of good weather with new visiting pilots find amazing. For paragliding flight practice, three main areas or slopes on the island can be defined. North, East and Southwest and the Anaga Peninsula, the tip of the arrow. In turn, in each zone we can find two flight areas, below and above thermal inversion, which generates distinctive conditions in terrain and climate. Humid weather with variable conditions below it, and dry and sunny weather above it. For this region, local pilots usually talk about coastal flights mid-altitude flights and summit flights. 
although landing on the coast is expected in most of the cases. In light east wind, we can fly over the area of Guima and Fasina, among others. Located in the north is the flight area of the Orotava Valley. Although it is exposed to the wind, the airflow is forced to slow down and move away from the coastal profile of the island, creating an ideal haven for windward flight. There is usually a cloud layer of thin stratocumulus which can get fat under highly humid conditions and produce light rainfall, especially in the first and last hours of the day. The cloud layer and thermal inversion are at the same level. They are dynamic flights, although during the morning the sun may show up and we can also find conditions for thermals. The best example is La Corona flight in the municipality of Los Rialos. With a height difference of 500 to 750 meters, it overlooks the sea with excellent views of the Orotava Valley and an official launching site on artificial grass. You can fly for hours in laminar and stable air, especially in the afternoon. If the wind increases or there is much cloudiness, it's advisable to fly the southeast slope. It's the best thermal flight area in all of the archipelago. The takeoffs of Ilfonche, Taucho, and Los Pinos are usually protected from bad weather thanks to Mount Tiedi. This enables a large number of free flight days, something difficult to find elsewhere. Mm -hmm. 